All right, welcome back, guys. We're just going to go over a few things we talked about last time. One interesting story, it's just we talked about this new technology that was used in World War One, and the one of the most devastating uh, inventions was that of the poisonous gas, mustard gas and other gases, which would basically burn people's lungs, torture them. At, I mean, unbelievably horrible pain. Uh, chemical weapons have actually been outlawed under the United Nations, and we saw that in Syria they were used, and that was not tolerated. So the inventor, Fritz Haber, was a German Jewish scientist, and he gave this secret weapon to the Germans to win against the Allies and the Central Powers, to win against France and Great Britain and Russia. The horrible story behind it is that after World War I, he would stay on as a German scientist, and then a young Adolf Hitler uh, would take power and then become the, uh, the dictator of, of Germany, and when he came into office, he got rid of all the Jewish people, and he fired all the Jewish scientists, and actually he left uh, Dr. Haber alone for a while, but even Haber stepped down and left, because what he was going to use his gases for was to actually kill and exterminate the Jewish people through what's called genocide. And we'll go more into that when we get to World War II. Now we're going to watch a clip, a piece from the famous anti-war movie, Pass of Glory. It's... Uh, it's actually considered one of the first anti-war movies, and you're going to see just how horrible it depicts World War I and trench warfare. Uh, these are French soldiers getting ready to attack using trench warfare techniques to go across no man's land. That Remember that area between one trench and another, and they're going to attack a defensive German position with machine guns, and it is just going to be an onstral slot. So let's look at this, and you can kind of see how they're using new technology against old war techniques okay and just and make sure that you have this imagery in your mind for uh, when we, we talk about World War One.
just saw was a piece of Pass of Glory by Stanley Kubrick, and you could just see how horrible, even in black and white, World War One and trench warfare really appeared. The main character, the guy in charge, is actually uh, Kirk Douglas, who's a famous American actor, and this is a, a, one of the first anti-war movies. Okay, so now we're going to get into how the U.S. gets into this uh, world conflict. Literally a world war. They're fighting in Africa. They're fighting in the Mideast, Asia, Europe, almost everywhere in the world, maybe with the exception of North America. Um, and even then you could argue with the submarine sinking ships by America that they, they get pretty close to our own country. Now the cause of the U.S. entering the war. Well, first we're going to take, Americans are going to be proud of, we, t we take what's called a isolationist belief now let's look at the root word of isolationism whenever you see an ism which is a belief in or is somebody that believes in you need to look at the root word the root word isolationism is or isolationist is isolate so isolate means to keep to yourself stay out of others affairs also they're going to take what's called a neutral neutral being not for or against one group or the other approach so the, we see this as you can see in the cart or the uh, pictures on the right. Keep us out of the war. Keep out of Europe. This is Europe's problem. This has nothing to do with America. Stay out of it. Now, isolation is the belief that a country should not get involved in other nations' affairs. So this is us staying out of this, and uh, this is not our affair. Actually, President uh, Woodrow Wilson is going to basically uh, run on the campaign saying that if you vote for me in 1914, I promise you we will not get into World War I. So we're going to see if we can stay to this uh, belief in the system. Now, the United States did something that is, I would argue, is really not neutral and not very isolationist at all. The United States was selling supplies to support the British war effort. Now this is interesting. Or pre well, President Woodrow Wilson says he wants to be neutral. He clearly, from what we've read as, and historians have studied about him, he had what's called an Anglophile bias, meaning he really admired Anglo, which are English, and their culture. So Anglophile is somebody that really admires or looks up to English culture. So he, right then and there, he tended to like the English more. He... Uh, and what's going to happen as a result of that? Not just him. We're going to have we're going to have this close relationship with Britain, which is going to make us more support the Allies. So by sending war supplies and even in some cases maybe money, we are we really staying isolationists or neutral? Like we talked about isolationism, the Span Spanish American War. This is not really staying out of the war at all. And the Germans and the Central Powers are going to quickly see that. Now, the first real big event that is going to make everybody look at U.S. getting involved in this and the beginning of the causes of us entering World War I is the sinking of the boat, the Lusitania. Now, the Lusitania sunk in May 7th, 1915 by a German U-boat, which is a submarine, sub meaning below, marine, water, going below water. This is the first time they really used submarine in all-out warfare. The Lusitania was a British passenger ship that had hundreds of U.S. citizens on board, about 128 actually. So there might have been 1,200 passengers on this ship, 128 were American. But what the, the Germans are going to argue is that they knew that America was sending weapons and there's probably weapons in the hull or the, or the bottom of that ship, like machine guns and bullets to support the British. And once you have weapons on a ship, that makes it a fail, a fair target. This is really going to upset Americans. Because at the time, first of all, if you're going to sink a ship, you're supposed to at least honk your horn and notify before you sink them so that, that the innocent people could jump off the ship. Okay, especially the cruise ship. That's not going to happen with submarine warfare. There's no, really, the whole point of a submarine is to stealthily or undercover, you can't see, destroy a ship. So that really upsets the Americans there. All right, now let's look at the next cause. Now, so what happens is Germany agrees with Pre President Wilson 
to stop sinking ships with American citizens on it, okay? So, you can see, this is going to keep things together. Remember, everybody's got the Lusitania in the back of their mind, though. Americans are starting to really start to feel strongly in support of the Allies and hating the Germans. There's going to be a lot of German propaganda. It's going to make fun of Germans, make them look ugly and radish. You can see in the cartoon, the top right-hand corner, the German cartoon, is it just looks real sleazy, and that's the propaganda, and then... Now something else is going to go on. So the Germans continue what's called unrestricted submarine warfare. So they stop for a minute, but really within two years, they go back to their old ways. And they are just they know that the U.S. is sending weapons and more and more supplies to the British and the French and the Russians to win this war. And they have close ties with the French and British. So they have what's called unrestricted, meaning anything goes. You can't tell me that it's a passenger ship because you're smuggling things. So we're going to target anything that's going to Britain from America. And it gets pretty nasty. They actually sink, I believe, five merchant ships that were bringing, that were probably, in fact, bringing supplies to Great Britain from the United States to help them in the war effort. And it just keeps going. Finally, the straw that breaks the camel's back is in 1970, the German Foreign Secretary Arthur Zimmerman releases what's called the Zimmerman Telegram. This offered Mexico back the lands the U.S. took if they joined the Central Powers. So what happens is the Prime Minister of, I'm not the Prime Minister, the Foreign Minister of Germany, Arthur Zimmerman, sends this telegram to the Foreign Minister of Mexico, to their country, the representative, and it basically says, look, we're pretty sure the U.S. is going to get in this war because of of because we keep sinking their merchant ships we can see it coming if you join with us we'll give you back all the lands they took for you in the southwest like texas new mexico albuquerque just join with us and what's going to happen is the british the british are going to intercept this telegram they're going to show it to the united states and it's going to be published in all the papers and with the Cinco de lusitania and the sub unrestricted warfare the, through submarines and now the zimmerman telegram America just can't stay out of the war. Even Wilson, who runs in 1960, I'm still not, I kept us out of the war. We got to go for it. We got to get in there. Okay? Now, two things are going to happen next. The U.S. is going to start changing laws and a lot of the things, the freedoms that we have today. The first, the U.S. government is going to have conscription or forced military service to fight in World War I. So now, we're not going to be free to just sign up to fight in World War I, uh, they're going to have to start conscribing or bringing people into a draft or making them join the military. And they actually get over 2 million men to basically and start drafting them into this war. And they send the troops in to uh, fight and, uh, get on the Allies' side and support the British and the French. And this is really going to be a tipping point so why the, the Allies are going to win the war. The second thing, which is really... Uh, controversial they make a law called the espionage act in 1917 where people can be tried for not being loyal to the government uh, eugene De uh, debs which is the president of the socialist party you can see the socialists in the picture eugene debs is going to go to jail for 10 years for being a socialist and being against the war could you imagine in america today if somebody went to to jail for 10 years for being against the war in afghanistan or iraq i think people would be really upset at that time, they were accepting it. And then you could see there was some cartoons, though. There were people criticizing, free the press. And they've trapped the press, which is the media and the news. And we can't get the whole story from the government. So we're going to stop there. But I want you to remember, the causes of the U.S. getting involved in, in World War I are going to be the sinking of Lusitania is going to quickly make the Germans the enemy. There's going to be a lot of negative propaganda against the Germans. Then, unrestricted submarine warfare. Yeah, they said they would stop, but they wouldn't. They kept going. And then finally, the Zimmerman telegram, which says that if Mexico joins sides with the Central Powers, Austria, Hungary, Germany, and uh, the Ottoman Empire, that the, that the Germans will give them back their land, give them back Mexico and the parts that America took when World War I is over and they're victorious. All right, guys, get ready for the next video. Take care.